Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions Lesson Number 4, Finding Equations of Exponential Functions Homework Review, Part 2. In our last review, we had gone over finding uh, exponential functions from coordinate pairs. And uh, this, one, this question here from the Part 2, from Number 2, is very similar. So for each of the following coordinate pairs, find the equation of the exponential function in the form y equals a times b to the x power that passes the pair. Show the work that you use to arrive at your answer. So like last time, we were going to find uh, our work by doing the following. We're going to, in this case, step one, plug the coordinates into the formula to get the two equations. Step two, solve the system equations, except this time, here, usually we'll divide one equation by the other to divide out the a value. This way we can solve for the b value. Step three is use the b value to help solve for the a value. And step four, plug a and b values back into the formula. Now, it's a little bit different from before because in the previous problems, what we did was we were able to find a right away since uh, our x value, one of the x values had a zero to it. But this time around, we don't have that. So we'll, we'll apply our, our rules in this, in this case. Again, plug in our values into the form y equals a times b of the x. So we begin with the following. Since the first coordinate has x of 2 and a y value of 192, we will get 192 is equal to a times b to the second power. And here, for the second coordinate, our x is 5 and our y value is 12,288, our second equation will be 12,288 is equal to a times b to the fifth power. Now, the a's don't cancel out because we have uh, a, a, you know, b to if for the first one, b squared, and if the second would be the fifth. So we're going to divide the two equations. And I like having my numerator be the term, be the equation where, where the b value is a, has a highest exponent. So for so I'm going to set 12,288 is equal to a times b to the fifth on top is my numerator. Then have 192 equal to a times b to the second as my denominator. And I'll divide both equations. So what happens when we divide both equations? Well, we definitely see the a values divide out because a over a is 1. And using the laws of exponents, b to the fifth divided by b squared is going to be b to the 5 minus 2 or b to the third power. So this divides out on the right side to be the third. Now on the left side, we're going to take our calculator, and whether you use your phone or a graphic calculator, either one, and we're going to take, in this case, the 12,288 and divide that by 192. And we will get a value of 64. And so now, with 64, we want to find the value of b when raised to the third power is equal to 64. What number raised to the third power equals 64? On our calculator, we can raise both sides to the one-third power. We talked about before the idea of, of raising both sides to the reciprocal of the, ex, of the exponent, in this case, for the base. So here, if the exponent is 3, we're raising both sides to the 1 over 3. And we will find, in this case, our b value beats the first, because b to the third raised the one-third, we're multiplying exponents, 3 times one-third is 1. And 64 to the one-third power, or the q root of 64, is equal to 4. So we found for ourselves the value of b. Now, we're going to use this value of b and plug into one of the equations. Probably going to go with 192 equals a times b squared. Probably because it's an easier number to work with. So, 192 
is equal to a times 4 squared. Now, 4 squared is going to be 16, so 192 equals 16a, and we're going to divide both sides by 16 to get the a value. So we go to a calculator again, 192 divided by 16, and we get a value of 12. So now we know that our a value is 12, our b value is 4. The equation of we're going to get for x minus equation will be y is equal to 12 times 4 raised the x power. And so all we're doing is plugging in the values of a and b back into the form. Okay, and I'll make this full page so you can see the entire steps here for part a. We'll repeat the same thing for part B. Again, we're going to plug in our values here. So let me draw a little line here to extend this null so we don't get our work mixed up. But we have the same exact steps, though. All right, let me just make this uh, page width, and we'll work on the right side. Again, for our first coordinate, x is 1 and y is 192. Therefore, by plugging in, we have 192. Oh, it looks like the same y value, except this time we have a times b to the first power. And for the second coordinate, x is 5 and y is going to be 60.75. So we have 60.75 is equal to a times b to the fifth power. Interesting. Same to x, same to x values. What? Well, in this case, not to the same two x values. We have the same x value for the second coordinate and the same y value for the first coordinate. And again, when we write this, we divide everything out. I recommend highly to have the, the uh, have the, for your numerator equation, if you will call it a numerator equation, the, the numerator equation to be the one with the b value with a higher exponent. So we're going to write down 60.75 is equal to a times b to the fifth power. And then we're going to I'll put the other equation, 192 equals a times b to the first power. And then we'll divide. And so on the right side, well, the a's divide out. So a over a is 1. We know it can't be zero because with zero, then you know you have nothing here. So, so b the fifth divided by b the first is b to the five minus one or fourth power. Now, interesting enough, sixty point seven five divided by one ninety two, sixty point seven five divided by one ninety two gets this crazy strange number here. Okay. We're going to need our calculator for this. So let's break out a calculator. So it was 60.75. We're dividing this by 192. And 0.31640625. Now, this we could write out the whole decimal, or we can go hit for, in this case, our math button. And Notice that we can change to a fraction, hopefully, hit uh, enter twice, and this becomes 81 over 256, okay? So 81 over 256. Now, what we're going to do here is very similar to what we did for the other problem. We're going to raise both sides the reciprocal of 4 because b to the fourth power is equal to 81 over 256. And so we raise both sides the reciprocal of 4, we'll be able to get b to the first power. So we'll do b to the one fourth. Raise this to the one fourth power. Now let's bring up a calculator again. Now we could find the four, the, the fourth root of 81 and the fourth root of 256, or we could let a calculator take care of this. And so be able to just Bring the cursor up to the highlighted answer we got, hit enter, and then we're going to raise that to the one fourth power, so one divided by four. 
and we're going to get the, our base to be equal to three fourths. Okay, very nice in this case that uh, it left us it left the the answer in a in a fraction form. Uh, if we had taken the original number way back up here, copy that and raise this to the one fourth power, I wonder if it'll change it to to uh, three fourths as well, or give us a decimal of 0.75. Okay, so it's so whatever form it's in will give us here. So notice that we had if we left the decimal and raised it, it kept again. The nice thing is that our calculator allows us to just copy and paste these things. So it's kind of nice that. So we use 0.75 with three fourths, whichever you feel is you know you want to use. So b is equal to I'm gonna go with three fourths because I like the fractions. That's not my math teacher. That's what yeah, you know, that's my thing. So b is equal to three fourths. And now we're going to, again, use this equation here and to try to solve for A. So we have 192 is equal to A times 3 fourths to the first power, which is really 3 fourths. And so we want to solve for A, and so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of four, 3 fourths or 4 thirds. Okay, so let's break our calculator again. We'll take 192 and we're going to multiply it by 4 over 3. Parenthesis, 4 over 3. Close parenthesis. And then we'll hit enter. And we get 256. Okay, so we divide by 3 fourths, same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 4 thirds. So we get 256 as our answer for A. Now that we have our A value and our B value, we can now find the equation of this exponential function. Y is equal to 256, not 258, sorry about that. Y is equal to 256, which is A times, I keep writing down A, so strange. 256, uh, make sure it's clear. Sorry for that, ladies and gentlemen. So focus on A. <laughs> so that's A value times B, which is the 3 fourths to the X power. And this is going to be our equation. And so maybe it's full page here. We see in this case, unlike the first part we did, here we're using, we're going to you know, uh, take the two equations, divide them together, divide out the A. For the first set of equations we did, uh, we were able to get A by itself because the X value was zero. So it worked out very nicely for us. So the strategy, we have two basic two, two strategies. If you have an X value that's zero, we'll use our first set, uh, like the same thing we did for question number one, uh, and finding A value first and plugging into the second one to solve for B. If you don't have any A value, any X values with zero, we'll basically write out both equations, divide them, divide out the A, and solve for B. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our homework review part two for exponential functions, lesson four, finding equations of exponential functions. Thanks so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you and what you thought of the video. And if maybe you can do anything better, I'm really trying to improve every single time. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and be safe.